Hey guys, YouTube Warren Editor. Okay, and so here I go. This is going to be uh, my thoughts about um, night one of WrestleMania 37, as I promised you guys. Yeah, so yeah, so it just uh, ended about, uh, I don't know, probably about like uh, 30 to 45 minutes ago as I'm recording this. And, uh, you know, for the most part, like for night one, I thought that this was a pretty good event. Yeah, I thought that this uh, was a pretty good show. Yeah, I mean, I did enjoy it for the most part. I mean, there wasn't really anything that I was, like, completely bored with on the show. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was, like, nice to, like, see the crowd back finally. I mean, yeah, this, they even said, like, this is the first time in, like, a year, a month, and a day that <laughs> uh, they have had a crowd for a show. So, yeah, so it was nice seeing a crowd again at WrestleMania. Yeah. And I found it to be, like, kind of funny because, yeah, if you watched uh, WrestleMania, well, yeah, if you watched uh, the show tonight, yeah, as it, like, started up, like, there was, like, an introduction from, like, a Vince McMahon and just, like, all the superstars just, like, standing in the entranceway, and Vince just, like, uh, saying that they're glad to help, like, have the crowd back, and he just, like, said, welcome to WrestleMania, yeah. Now, then there was, like, a small little uh, video package for Wrestle the opening of WrestleMania. But then, yeah, once, like, like WrestleMania was, like, supposed to officially start, like, um... Now, the show ended up being delayed due to, I guess it was apparently raining. So, yeah, they ended up, like, uh, just, just, like, having the show on a little bit of a delay. It, like, it was delayed for, like, 30 minutes or something. Yeah, and during that time... Uh... Yeah, they were, like, just, like, in the backstage areas, or, like, just, like, interviewing the various uh, superstars that were competing on the show, whether it was on this night or tomorrow night. Yeah, they were just, like, interviewing various wrestlers, and I found that to be, actually be kind of interesting. It kind of did feel like the older days of WrestleMania, like, you remember, like, in the um, earlier WrestleManias, like, some of, like, the earliest ones, like, like from WrestleMania 1 up until, like, uh, I don't know, WrestleMania, um, Eight or so, um, <laughs> where there were just like be like times where, where like there would just be like a, a period in the show where they would just like be interviewing just like various wrestlers. Yeah, when they were doing it tonight, it actually did kind of feel like what they did back in those days. So yeah, I found it to be kind of interesting that they did it. Yeah, and I just really found it kind of funny that just like as soon as the show was supposed to start, that's when they like, like put it on like a weather delay so yeah i just found it kind of funny that it was just like right as the show started and plus yeah this is your uh first event in like over a year with the crowd back and you put it on delay so yeah i just found it kind of funny like i'm sure like some people were kind of um upset by it but yeah i just like really found it funny with the timing and stuff <laughs> yeah and yeah, and like I said, when it started off, like, it was on delay for about, like, uh, 30 minutes or so. But yeah, then they did eventually resume it. And, and yeah, and it was interesting because apparently, like, uh, during the delay, I guess, like, in the commentary table, like, one of the mics ended up um, shorting out or something. So, yeah, for, like, the first uh, match on the show, like, <laughs> the commentators, like, Michael Cole and Corey Graves and, yeah, and, like, Samoa Joe and all of them. Yeah, they actually, like, had to, like, stand in front of the announce table, like, through the first match. So, yeah. So, yeah, there's, like, some technical issues there. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, once the show was then, like, able to resume, yeah, the co-hosts of WrestleMania, uh, Hulk Hogan and Tyus O'Neil, like, just came out. And then, yeah, they were just, like, welcome every everybody to WrestleMania, just cutting, like, a small little promo. Hype up the crowd, Yeah. Yeah. And then the first match on the event was uh, the WWE title match. It's a Bobby Lashley defending against um, Drew McIntyre. And, uh, yeah, I did think that this was fine. I mean, I thought it was a, a solid enough match. I, I enjoyed it enough, I guess. Yeah, it was just kind of like a back-and-forth match. Match the ring. Yeah, yeah, like uh, Drew McIntyre went on offense and Lashley went on offense and <clears throat> Yeah, it just kinda like went back and forth between the two of them. Yeah. Yeah, and there were like some near falls during the match. Like there was a point in the match where like uh uh Drew McIntyre like actually performed like three future shot DDTs. These and yeah, but Lashley ended up uh, surviving. Yeah. Yeah, and there were, like, a couple of points in the match where, like, um, where, uh, 
like a Drew McIntyre, like a Head Lashley and a Kimura. And yeah, I've talked about this before, just like I really don't buy like when they use the Kimura in WWE because yeah, that's just like that is like a legitimate like submission move like they use in like MMA and stuff. And yeah, and when you got the Kimura on, like you got to tap like immediately or else your arm is just done. Like, your arm will, like, just be pulled out of socket or break. Yeah, and you're heading, like, right to the ER. So, yeah, so I really didn't buy that. Like, uh, New McIntyre really had it on Lashley for as long as he did. Yeah, I just really, yeah, that stuff's just, like, really not believable. Yeah, but then, yeah, then eventually, like, uh, as a... Uh, New McIntyre was trying to go for a Claymore kick on Lashley, like, MVP who was, of course, like, at ringside with Ashley, like, how oh, distracted Drew McIntyre. And, yeah, Ashley then was able to, um, uh, and, yeah, Ashley was able to, like, a counter it into a uh, hurt lock. <coughs> yeah. yeah, and, like, Drew McIntyre was, like, trying to fight out of it, but then, yeah, eventually, like, uh, as it looked like he was really, like, going to break out of it, Lashley was just, was, like, held on to it. And then, yeah, then eventually, uh, Drew McIntyre just ended up uh, passing out. And so, yeah, the referee ended up, like, just stopping the match and awarding the decision to Lashley. So, Lashley ended up retaining. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, I really don't like when they, like, end the matches like that. I really don't like how they just end it with, like, a, somebody passing out. I mean, sometimes it does work. Like, in the uh, Bret Hart, Stone Cold, Submission Match at WrestleMania 13, like, it worked there because that really did make him, Stone Cold, really, like, lose without, like, really, like, uh, legitimately, like, uh, submitting or anything. So it, it didn't make him look bad. And it really did help with, like, his push to a main event. But here... <laughs> I just really didn't like it. I mean, even if, like, they did want to end this match like this, I mean, couldn't they have just, like, done the thing where, like, the hands raised up and it drops three times and it's done? Like, just the referee was just, like, a, kept saying, like, you okay, you okay? And then, like, when Drew McIntyre just didn't respond, the referee then called for it. Like, why do you have to, like, do it like that? I mean, can't you do it, like, with the uh, dropping the arm and stuff? At least give them a chance. And to come back, but yeah. Yeah, but it is what it is, and yeah, Lashley ended up uh, retaining the championship, so, yeah, so, yeah, my prediction for this match, like, yeah, it wasn't what I predicted, like I said, I predicted Drew McIntyre to win, but, yeah, well, like I said, this could have gone either way, so, I guess, like, yeah, I guess, like, it's nothing where I was really, like, uh, I should have any shame of being wrong about it, because, like I said, this really could have gone either way, and so, yeah, the guy that I didn't uh, pick won the match. Yeah, but overall, I mean, I did think that for the most part it was solid. I mean, I really didn't buy the Kimura and wasn't too keen with the knockout finish like that. But yeah, the match itself, like the in-ring work, yeah, it was like still solid. And yeah, and I wasn't really bored watching it. So yeah, overall, I did enjoy that match enough. All right. The next up then was the Tag Team Turmoil match to determine the number one contenders for the uh, Women's Tag Team Championship tomorrow night. Yeah, so the two teams starting it off were um, uh, Naomi and Lana against uh, Carmella and Billy Kay. Yeah, and then, yeah, and yeah, Carmella and uh, Billy Kay won after a few minutes after, like, uh, Carmella was, like, uh, kicking uh, uh, Billy Kay's back uh, as she, like, had, um, I think it was, um, was it Naomi and a roll-up? Well, yeah, to get more leverage, so yeah. So, uh, Lana and Naomi were the first eliminated. Yeah. Then the next extender were the Riot Squad, and yeah, then, yeah, they just made quick work of Carmella and Billy Kay with a gutbuster backstop. And then, yeah, Carmella even, like, tried to do, to assist, um, Billy Kay in a roll-up up, uh, pin again, but yeah, the referee caught it that time, so yeah, it didn't work that time. Yeah, but then, yeah, then, uh, yeah, like I said, um, yeah, the Riot Squad made a quick work of Carmella and Billy Kay, yeah, and then eliminated them. Yeah, then Mandy Rose and Nana Brooke were the next one to enter, and then, <coughs> yeah, then the Riot Squad then eliminated them. Um, with, like, an inside cradle, yeah. And then the last team to enter was uh, Natalia and Tamina. So, yeah, the two teams that I was uh, predicting to win this match were actually, like, the last two teams in the match. So, yeah, so I was going to be right, right, regardless. So, yeah, so, yeah. But, yeah, and then, yeah, the two, and then, then went at it, and then, yeah. Then eventually, after, like, Tamina hit a, a super 
by Splash on a uh, Liv Tyler, then uh, that then uh, got um, Natalia and Tamina the win. So yeah, so Natalia and Tamina uh, are the number one contenders to face um, uh, Nia Jax and um, Shayna Baszler tomorrow. So yeah, so now as far as who I think is gonna win that match tomorrow, because I said I was gonna give my prediction here. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm gonna have to give it to um Natalia and Tamina. I think that they are likely going to um win the tag team titles tomorrow. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah, so this match, I mean, I guess I really shouldn't really complain about it because I mean it was really what I was expecting. It wasn't really anything that I was really caring for too much. So yeah, so I really can't say that I really have any complaints with this. This served its purpose just fine. Alright. The next up was uh uh, Seth Rollins versus Cesaro, and, uh, yeah, this was, I guess this was, uh, just fine, I mean, yeah, this, once again, really wasn't something that I was really, like, uh, it wasn't really one of the matches that I was really looking forward to the most, so, yeah, so I guess, like, this was, uh, just fine, and, yeah, uh, Early on, as Cesaro like tried to, well, not Cesaro, uh, Rollins tried to go for the stomp, but like Cesaro countered it and had the, uh, and, like a swung a Seth Rollins around, and then eventually like uh, he got a sharpshooter in on Seth Rollins, but Seth Rollins was able to counter it. Yeah, and Seth Rollins was able to survive a neutralizer. Yeah, no, at one point as Cesaro was like trying to go for another neutralizer. So, or Cesaro was trying to, sorry. Rollins was able to counter that into a pedigree. <laughs> you know, it looked like that might have been it, but, uh, yeah, Cesaro survived it. <coughs> yeah. And then, yeah, and then as Seth Rollins then was, like, trying to go for the curb stomp again, uh, Cesaro was able to just, uh, catch, uh, Seth Rollins in midair with an uppercut. Yeah. And then, yes, and then, uh, yeah, then Cesaro then, like, got uh, Seth Rollins up and then, like, did a UFO to him, and then, yeah, then he, like, a spun a Seth Rollins around, like, 23 times, breaking the record of when he did it on SmackDown a couple weeks ago, 22 times, so, yeah, so he broke his record here, yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, and then after that, then, uh, uh, Cesaro then, um, nailed a Seth Rollins with a neutralizer, and then, yeah, Seth Rollins, well, oh, and then, uh, Cesaro then was able to get the pin and win the match, so, yeah, <coughs> so yeah so yeah this match i guess was uh, good enough i mean yeah the in-ring work was a uh, solid enough and yeah there wasn't really like any like steel moment in here and given like this really wasn't like one of the matches i was really like looking forward to the most on the show yeah i guess like i this i really don't really have a whole lot to complain about for the match so yeah so yeah but cesaro ended up getting the win so yeah this was another one where yeah uh i was wrong so yeah at this point like i was a uh, one for three so far with my predictions. It's all right. So yeah, yeah. The next up, then we had uh, the uh, Raw Tag Team Championships on the line with uh, the New Day, Kofi Kingston, and Xavier Woods defending the titles against uh, AJ Styles and and uh, Almost or Almost, what, however his name is pronounced. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. And really, just the uh, yeah. I really can't complain too much about this one. I mean. I guess, like, this was just about, like, what I was uh, expecting for it. Yeah. AJ Styles started off the match against, uh, the New Day. Yeah. But then, yeah, then, like, as, yeah, then, like, just, the New Day was really just trying to really prevent, uh, AJ Styles from tagging in, uh, Omos, or Omas. Yeah, Omas, is that how it's pronounced? Yeah, and yeah, and they were able to stop him for a good chunk of the match, but then, yeah, then eventually, um, AJ was able to tag in, uh, Omas, uh, so then, yeah, and then, yeah, after Omas came in, like, just, yeah, it was pretty much just, yeah, what you would probably expect, yeah, the New Day, both uh, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston, and were trying to attack him, but, yeah, they were just, yeah, their attacks just, like, had no effect on, um, and, uh, Omos, or Omas, Yeah, and so, yeah, when Omos, like, was in the match, like, their, the attack from uh, Kofi and uh, Xavier, like, just had no effect on him. Yeah, and then, yeah, then he just made, like, a, yeah, he just was, like, a, throwing the two of them just around, like, rag dolls. And I was, yeah, and then, yeah, then eventually, uh, uh, 
uh, AJ Styles like hit the uh, phenomenal forearm on Xavier Woods, and then uh, Omas then like just a uh, powerbomb Kofi Kingston and pinned him with just like his foot on uh, Kofi. And so yeah, then yeah, uh, AJ and um, um, Omas uh, got uh, yeah they uh, won the uh, Raw Tag Team Championship. So yeah, so yeah, I was right on that prediction. So yeah, so yeah, two for four so far. Uh, yeah, and that match overall, I mean, yeah, it was solid enough. I mean, yeah, the stuff with like um, like AJ going at it with uh, Kofi and Xavier, yeah, it was uh, enjoyable. And yeah, the stuff with uh, when Omos got in, I mean, yeah, it was just about like basically what you would probably expect. So yeah, so yeah, not really anything to complain about with that match, really. All right, then next up, then we had uh, the steel cage match between uh, Braun Strowman and Shane McMahon. Now, as Braun Strowman was about to enter the cage, uh, Elias and uh, Jackson Ryder like, attacked uh, Braun Strowman and nailed him with uh, steel chairs. Yeah, and then yeah, then of course like that gave Shane the early advantage in the match. Yeah, and yeah, early in the match, like Shane was just like uh, nailing Braun Strowman with a chair and then just uh, beating on his leg. Hey, yeah. But then, yeah, then eventually, yeah, Braun Strowman then, like, uh, got back up and then was starting to just attack Shane. Yeah, and then, one point, as how Braun Strowman was down, then Shane, like, hit a coast-to-coast uh, -coast on Braun Strowman. He, like, I think he, like, kicked him right in the head. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Uh, then, at one point, as, like, Shane was, like, trying to climb out of the cage, then he grabbed, like, a piece of the, um, metal that was like on the top of the cage and started to hit Braun Strowman with that. But yeah, then like Braun Strowman then was just like overpowering Shane. And yeah. Then yeah, then Elias and uh, Riker then like came back again and then they were trying to like help Shane climb out of the cage. But before Shane could get out, Braun Strowman just uh, like uh, nailed them, Riker and Elias, Elias from the inside of the cage. Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, Shane just ended up falling back in the cage. Yeah. Then at one point, yeah, Shane was trying to escape again. Now, Braun Strowman, like, uh, came after Shane. And, but, yeah, then Shane, like, grabbed a toolbox that was, like, in one of those um pockets or whatever uh, or at the top of the cage and uh, nailed Braun Strowman with that, knocking him, like, just back into the ring. Yeah. And then it looked like that was going to be it for Braun Strowman and Shane was going to win right there. But then as Shane was, like... Get, like, uh, climbing over, like, he was just, like, stalling, just, like, he actually, like, put his hand, hand through, like, one of the, uh, pieces of the fencing in the cage, and then, <coughs> yeah, Braun Strowman then, like, got back up, and then just, like, uh, pulled Shane's arm, arm through the, uh, fencing some more, yeah, then Braun Strowman actually ripped the wall of the cage open and just pulled Shane back in there, yeah, yeah, then basically, like, after that, then Braun Strowman was just, was beating what was left out of Shane, and yeah, and then, yeah, then Braun Strowman, and it ended with Braun Strowman, like, pulling a Shane up to the top of the cage, and then just throwing him, just, like, back right down to the ring. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> and yeah, and then, yeah, then after that, then uh, Braun Strowman then just uh, hit a Shane with a running power slam, and then pinned Shane and got the win. So, yeah, Braun Strowman ended up winning. So, this really wasn't, like, the squash match that I was, like, predicting it was going to be. Yeah, uh, Shane really did get more offense than I was expecting in the match. But yeah, in the end, yeah, the outcome that I predicted it was the right one. And yeah, uh, Braun Strowman ended up getting the win. So yeah, so at that point, I was three for five. So yeah, so I guess that was an entertaining cage match. And plus, yeah, it was just about like what what people were probably expecting. Yeah, everything was that led up to this. Yeah, yeah, the... Yeah, what everybody was probably expecting did happen. So, yeah. So, I really can't complain. So, and so overall, it was an enjoyable cage match. All right. And then next up, then we had the tag team match with uh, The Miz and John Morrison versus Bad Bunny and Damian Priest. Yeah. So, like I said, I'm really not too uh, big on the uh, celebrity appearances at WrestleMania now. <laughs> yeah, and this was a match I really wasn't taking that seriously. Yeah, but surprisingly, it was actually a pretty good match. Yeah, 
Yeah, a Bad Bunny, like, started off the match against The Miz, and yeah, and Bad Bunny actually did put on a pretty good performance here. I mean, he was actually able to hold his own against The Miz, and yeah, he actually did a pretty good job, even if it wasn't really convincing, because, yeah, given, like, how small Bad Bunny really was compared to, like, The Miz and Morrison, yeah, it probably wasn't, didn't really look too believable with him, like, really, like, getting all that offense that he did in the match, yeah, but it was still, overall, like, yeah, it was still entertaining, he actually did a pretty good job in the match, and yeah, yeah, Bad Bunny was legal for, like, the, major, like, for the, a good chunk of the match, after it started, but then, yeah, then eventually, uh, Damian Priest was tagged in, and then, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and it was a nice spot where, like, both the Demian Priest and Bad Bunny then, like, simultaneously hit the uh, Broken Arrows on uh, Miz and Morrison, yeah. And then, yeah, then at one point, as, like, the Miz and John Morrison were, like, on the outside of the ring, Bad Bunny hit a crossbody from the turnbuckle down onto the floor to them, yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, then as a, a Bad Bunny and John Morrison were on the outside. The Miz had a skull crushing finale on Demian Priest. Looked like that might have been it, but Bad Bunny broke up the count. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, Bad Bunny then uh, hit a Canadian Destroyer on John Morrison from the outside of the ring. And then, yeah, then it was a nice uh, uh, ending with uh, Bad Bunny and Demian Priest hitting, like, one of those uh, electric chair hairs and cross-body combinations on uh, The Miz, and yeah, and, yeah, Bad Bunny, then up in The Miz, and yeah, so, yeah, Bad Bunny and uh, Damian Priest got the win. <coughs> so, yeah, so, yeah, given that I really wasn't taking this match that seriously, yeah, it really did uh, exceed my expectations. It actually was a pretty entertaining match. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, but yeah, it's the outcome that I predicted didn't happen, so yeah, the uh, Bad Bunny and Damian Priest got the win, and I just really hope like this is the end of uh, Bad Bunny, and then he's just like gone from WWE after this. I think now, yeah, this storyline has like served its purpose, so yeah, I just really hope that Bad Bunny is now done in the WWE after this. Yeah, but overall, yeah, this was a... Uh, a pretty entertaining match. It really did uh, exceed my expectations. So, yeah. So, it really is something that I really can't not really give any complaints about. Aside from the fact that, like I said, the, like, Bad Bunny, like, gaining the upper hand on Miz and Morrison probably w wasn't too convincing given he was so much smaller. But still, it was entertaining. <laughs> yeah. And then we had the main event of night one, the SmackDown Women's Championship match with Sasha Banks against, defending against Bianca Belair. And, yeah. This really was just like a really, really good, maybe even great match. Yeah. Yeah, it was just like really did go back and forth. Worth a lot. Like they were able to like survive each other's like signature moves in the match. Yeah. Yeah. In the match, like uh, Sasha was really like trying to really uh, use her. Use uh, Bianca's like uh, hair against her with like the long uh, braid that she has. Yeah, Sasha was really trying to use that against uh, Bianca a lot in the match. Yeah, at one point, um, like a uh, uh, Bianca Belair tried to go for a, a 450 on um Sasha, but uh, Sasha was able to get her knees up. Yeah, yeah. At one point, it was like a Sasha was gaining the upper hand on Bianca. Yeah, then as a uh, Bianca started to battle back, yeah, she then just like nailed Sasha in the face, and it really did seem like uh, it was. Like a legitimate punch that uh, Bianca uh, nailed the uh, Sasha with right there, yeah. Yeah, but then yeah, then eventually, um, uh, Bianca then like a uh, well, not Bianca, a uh, Sasha then had the got uh, the bank statement and on uh, Bianca and even like tried to like uh, tie her hair hair like around her arm arm for more leverage, yeah. But yeah, then like Bianca was like really like trying to uh, fight out of it, but and there was a cool spot where like Bianca was just like about to reach the rope, but then like a uh, Sasha like uh, rolled her back like closer to the middle of the ring, but then yeah, uh, Bianca then like rolled back to the ropes and was able to grab them. So yeah, a nice spot where like she tried to get her away from the ropes, but she was able to get back over to them by rolling. Her. Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah, then at one point as a Sasha was, like, sitting on the top turnbuckle, uh, Bianca then, like, tried to, um, uh, 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 like, uh, pull her back in the ring with, like, 
like swing her back with her legs. I forgot what that move was called, but yeah, she tried to do that, but that didn't work. And uh, Bianca was like a hanging upside down from the turnbuckle. But go, yeah. And then, yeah, and then as a Sasha then like tried to like just uh, just a slide to kick her in the face, like uh, Bianca was able to pull herself back up. Yeah. Then Bianca then did hit a 450 on a Sasha, but Sa Sasha survived it. Yeah, and then yeah, then at one point, like as like uh, uh, Sasha was trying to tug up Bianca's hair some more, Bianca was able to like pull it back and just damn, Bianca like uh, just whipped a Sasha with her tail and just that impact. It sounded like it was an actual whip. Like what in the hell is in Bianca's hair? Like seriously, you women could really learn something from Bianca. Like if you ever want to have something to just defend yourself, something always on you, like. Like, just use that as an example. Like, grow your hair that long so you can use it as a whip like she did. Just, damn, that impact. Like, when she, like, whipped Sasha with her hair. Yeah, even afterwards, like, you could even see, like, the welt on Sasha's body. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, then eventually, then, um, uh, uh, Bianca Belair then uh, hit the KOD on Sasha and was able to get the pin, and Bianca Belair won the SmackDown Women's Championship. So, yeah, so, yeah, so it was pretty much what was really expected, I think, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was really what I was predicting, like, just ever since, like, the, like uh, Bianca debuted at the Royal Rumble last year, they've really been building her up, and yeah, this is the whole culmination of it, and she finally won the big one, so yeah, it was a great moment for Bianca, and yeah, you even saw, like, her family in the front row celebrating as well, <laughs> and one of her family members, I don't know if it was her dad or who, almost, like, jumped over the barricade, yeah, so they were really happy as well. Yeah, so this was an awesome moment for uh, Bianca Belair, and just, yeah, the, the impact of her whipping Sasha with her hair like that, just, damn, like, like does she have, like, a built-in whip in her hair or something? Like, is her hair that thick that, she, that it can be used as a whip like that? Just, damn. So, yeah, but, yeah, this was just a really, really good, maybe even great match, and just, yeah, that wilt on Sasha's body, just, damn, I mean, yeah, just... How sore is Sasha going to be tomorrow? Or from that whipping? Just, oh, damn. Yeah. But yeah, that was just a really, really good to great match. And I really did enjoy it. And plus, yeah, it was a great moment for Bianca Belair. She finally won the big one. Yeah. So yeah. And so, yeah. And so that was night one of WrestleMania tonight. So yeah. So overall, yeah, it really did deliver. I really did enjoy it. I mean, I can't really think of anything that really I... It was really boring or bad or anything. Yeah, all the matches were at least solid. So, yeah. So, I give night one of WrestleMania 37 a solid pass. Yes. So, yeah. So, yeah. Night one of WrestleMania, pretty good. Yeah. But, yeah. Now, how will night two turn out tomorrow? Will it be as good? Will it be better? Or will it totally just... You know, we'll just have to wait and see tomorrow how night two does turn out. Because, yeah, we still have have uh, Oscar versus Rhea Ripley... Ray Wyatt versus Randy Orton, Kevin Owen versus Sami Zayn, Hane, Roman Reigns versus Edge versus Daniel Bryan, and more. So, yeah, how will the the second half of the uh, match card for Night Two turn out? Yeah, we'll just have to wait till tomorrow, and then yeah, tomorrow I will be giving my thoughts on Night Two as well. But yeah, Night One pretty good. All right, so yeah, so I guess that's all I can really say. So yeah, so so those are my thoughts on Night One of WrestleMania Thirty Seven. So I hope you guys did enjoy. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.